In this video, I'm going to show you how you can do this basic hologram effect right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. It's actually much quicker and much simpler than you would believe. So let's get into it. So in order to do this effect, you just need your phone in your hand. Then we're just going to go onto the screen record function on your phone. And then when you're ready, just start creating the action, swiping up the hologram. Now, it's really important to note that as I'm swiping up here, I'm also swiping on my phone. So the two actions are happening at the same time. The reason why I'm doing this is because it means we don't have to animate anything later on. It's all just done in real time. It's just a case of taking a screenshot that is synced to my motion and then just adding a few effects to it. It's much quicker, much simpler, and it's gonna save a lot of time rather than creating the assets and animating them to my movement. It's also worth noting as well that you want to keep your camera static. That's gonna make things much easier. And you also just need to make sure that you're in a darker environment because if you're in a bright environment, it might not stand out that much. So being in a darker environment like this means you can add some nice glow effects and that's gonna really help to elevate the effect. So once you've got your footage captured and you've got that imported into Premiere, you also want to make sure you've got your screen recording in place as well. And now we just want to marry these two up together. So the first thing that we need to do is to actually look for that first movement. So where my first swipe is. So if I just play this clip, you can see that is there. This is where I start to swipe. So I'm just going to put a marker there. So I'm going to press C on the keyboard and just make a cut just so I can reference where that starts. Then I'll do the same thing on the screen recording layer. So I'm just going to scrub through to the point where it starts to move, which is there. So this is the point where I make first contact. So I'm going to make a cut there, move those on top of each other. And now when we play these back, you can see they are now in sync. So now from here, I can actually begin with the effect. We'll move this over to the left to where my hand is. And then I'm going to search for basic 3D. I'm going to drop basic 3D onto the screen recording layer. And I'm just going to adjust the swivel. So I'm going to flip it all the way around and then go to there. I'm also going to adjust the tilt just to tilt it away from myself a little bit. And then I'll decrease the scale a pinch. So somewhere around there. If I wanted to, I could also crop the top and the bottom just to remove the unnecessary stuff. So if I just drag crop on top, I can just crop that out. But you can see when I pull down this crop, it's really cutting into our tilted effect. So we need to make sure that crop is applied before basic 3D. And now when we do that, you can see it's going to crop the way it should be cropping. So I'm just going to pull down just to get rid of the mess at the top. And then I'm also just going to pull the bottom just to get rid of that set of logos. And now you can see if we just scale this up and put this in the right position, this is what we end up with. So you can see I'm now interacting with it, although I feel like I might need to move that over just a little bit more. And now from here, I'm just going to pull the opacity down a little bit. So you can see that is essentially the effect now complete. The problem is though, it's blending in with the background here a little bit because we've got this light here and the computer, it's kind of bleeding through that opacity, that lower opacity. So we are just going to drag that layer up onto video layer three. So that is the screen recording layer. Then I'm going to go into project and create a new black video. So we'll go new item, black video, press okay, and drag that onto video layer two and extend for the entire duration. Now from here, I'm just going to turn that off for now. And then I'm just going to draw a mask around myself on the right of the frame. So something like this. Now, when we turn that back on, you can see we've just added a black blob in front of ourself. So if we go into effect controls and go into the mask, if we press inverted, you can see it's flipped it. Of course, though, that's way too intense. So I'm just going to increase the mask feather. Then I'm going to increase the mask expansion. And then I'm just going to pull the general opacity down until I get to a point that I'm happy with. So I feel like somewhere around 80% or so is really going to help. So this was before and this is after. So it's just helping just to add those two together. Now, there's a few things that we need to do here. At the moment, there's no light being emitted from this. So we need to add a nice glow onto this and then we need to see that on the person. So that will be on myself. So in order to do that, I'm just going to make a copy of that layer. So I'm going to go Command C and Command V, or if you're on Windows, that is Control C, Control V. So just copy and paste. On this top layer, I'm just going to increase the scale. Just going to move that over, and then I'm going to go into Effects and search for Blur. 
Then I'll drop a Gaussian blur on top of that and we'll increase the Gaussian blur until it's quite large like this. I'm also going to just increase this just a little bit more. And then I'm just going to go into opacity and I'm just going to pull the opacity down until it gets to something like this. Now, if we just hide the original layer, this is what we have. So you can see this is quite a cool effect and we're going to basically use this as a template to create this effect. So with the original layer turned back on, we are just going to make a few adjustments. So I'm just going to uncheck uniform scale and I'm just going to affect the height on its own. Then I'm just going to affect the width as well, just a little bit. Essentially, I just want to put this on top of here just so that we get a little bit of spill coming out from the sides. And you can really pull the opacity down on this layer just a little bit and then increase the blurriness so that we end up with something like this. So you can see it's just softened on that edge. It looks nice. It looks like there's a little bit of light being emitted. But of course, that would also be emitted on my face as well. If I was in front of a screen, the light would be on my face. So in order to compensate for that, we're going to copy that pasted layer again, paste another layer on top, and then we're just going to move that on top of yourself. We'll increase the opacity for now. Then we can increase the scale. And then from there, we can go into the blend mode and have a play with these blend modes. Some of them might not look right. Some of them will do like completely the wrong thing but it is completely dependent on your footage. So I can't suggest one blend mode for you because it might work for me and it might look awful on yours. So just scrub through these blend modes, find one that works. Essentially, you just want a little bit of light being emitted on the face. I think I might just go for overlay. I think that looks the nicest in my example. It's not taking away too much light and we're getting that nice effect on our face. So with that, Blend mode now adjusted, I'm gonna go into opacity, select the free draw bezier, and I'm just going to draw around myself and the upper part of my body. Then we can increase the mask feather, and now when I play this back, you can see we're getting a little bit of light now being emitted onto the face, and this makes much more sense. Of course as well, that would also be emitted onto the table as well, so just down here. So we'll make another copy of that. And now when we play this back, you can see it's also affecting the table as well. So you can see there's a change there. Of course, feel free to make amendments on the go as well. So if it doesn't quite work, then just make a change. But you can see there's light being emitted on the table and on my face. So this is starting to make a lot more sense. There's loads that you can do here. But if we play this back from the very beginning, you can see this is what we have. So we're interacting with this effect. It looks pretty good and pretty convincing. And to be honest, it was quite simple. It was just a case of getting the right asset. So doing the screen recording at the same time as doing the action and then just adding some effects on this to blend this into the scene. But that is your basic scrolling phone hologram effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro now complete. So if you enjoyed watching this video, then please consider checking out this playlist and hopefully I will see you on a future video. See you there.